first of all, uh, I would like to thank you for your presence and your interest uh, to uh, talk with us. Um, SOS uh, Children Village International is uh, one of the largest uh, humanitarian organizations uh, fighting for the last 70 years with the mission that um, every child uh, to have a loving home. And uh, this kept the organization thriving and uh, has done tremendous impact in the world. I am very much privileged uh, to be elected as a president of this uh, huge federation uh, that has members uh, from 135 um, countries and territories in June uh, this year. It's just five months since I took about this responsibility. And um, currently, we are working to reach out to more children in the world who are in desperate need. And uh, we are also determined to improve the quality of care that we provide to these vulnerable children, children at risk for various reasons. But we don't want to do it alone. We want to work with governments, uh, institutional uh, partners, corporates, and individuals to achieve this aspiration of reaching out to more children. Our services through family and care reached out to 70,000. The children who are in need, who are in desperate need, are in millions. Therefore, we need to speak out and influence policy and practice uh, others also to take up the responsibility. The role of the media is very, very important in educating the public, in uh, influencing decision makers, policy makers, who, whose decision in the best interest of children could make a huge difference by allocating the necessary budgets, resources, putting in place legislation and policies that favor those children who um, are in need. I continue to refer to children, but uh, our organization is also looks um, after children until they are adult. So investment and working with young people, boys and girls, is equally very important. Increasingly, we are reaching out also to communities to partner with them and take the, you know, get their leadership to uh, bring change that is needed. So I'm quite happy to talk with you, depending on what questions you would ask. And, uh, but uh, I would encourage you before I just uh, sign off, um, you can make a difference if you are determined to uh, see uh, what is needed and what can be done. In the last um, week, I traveled with uh, National President Rakesh Disney, and uh, I looked into what SOS uh, has been doing for the last um, 50 years, and I'm extremely uh, touched by the impact it's making. And um, uh, this is this is incredible. It's one of the largest program in the whole world. And for me, it was to see the scale of the work and how it has been delivered in that context, given India is one of um, you know, the biggest country um, in the world as well. But the story I have to say is different. Um, the depth and the breadth of the work is mind boggling. There are incredible um, people who have given their life, their added life, to. Um, care and love these children, especially those who are uh, in one way or another impaired and they need special support right from uh, early age, age two or three, to adulthood. And um, that was a uh, very incredible uh, witness that will not be going away from my mind not only this children are cared for and it's so nice to see them uh, alive and their dignity and, and rights are respected like any other human being. Uh, but 
also to witness the <coughs> mothers and the caregivers who have been there with them from the very beginning until now. And uh, they are determined you know, to uh, continue to be with them until they are um, uh, you know, either independent or until they are stable. And that makes me uh, really extremely proud to be a member of this uh, international child care um, Thank you. I welcome all of you. I am extremely thankful to you for taking out time and showing interest uh, and, uh, to SOS. Uh, as uh, President Dr. Bodafo just mentioned, uh, SOS India is a part of the International Federation, which is called SOS International. And because India is a large company, country, uh, India also happens to be the largest member of the Federation. So it's a, uh, a special status in many ways, but along with status comes high responsibilities. And we have to measure up and deliver what we are expected to do. Uh, as well as, as you will be knowing, we have different programs. Our main program is the one in which you are here right now. Uh, children who don't have parents, we bring them home and they uh, stay with us till the time they become 18, 19 or 20 years and they live in a home. They don't live in a dormitory. It's a home. Six to seven children. They become brothers, sisters. There's a lady who looks after them. She becomes a mother. So this becomes a family. So this child who does not have, uh, who has lost parental care, gets a home, gets a family, which is brother, sister, and the mother, and then there is this loving community of the village. <coughs> and this is what we try and uh, give a new identity to the child after having lost her or his identity. Uh, in our program, the most important thing is to prepare the child to lead an independent life after uh, she or he leaves our care, which is around 18 or 20. <coughs> so we ensure couple of things. We ensure that the child gets basic education, at least high school, if not uh, higher secondary school. Every child also gets one certified vocational training based on which the child can get an, a job. And before the child leaves our care, we ensure the child has a job which gives the child a reasonable income to uh, be independent. Apart from that, we also focus on two things because we think that's very important in current times to uh, prepare the child uh, for uh, good independent living, which is uh, we try that each and every child has a good English speaking skill. And we also see to it that the child is able to use IT, computers, intranet, internet, etc., etc. We try and see that everybody is able to do that because we feel that both these things, English speaking and IT capabilities, significantly increase the employment chances of the uh, child. So these are certain focus areas which we have been focusing on. This is the tangible part of it. The softer part is we try to focus and create a character in the child, values in the child, make the child a good human being, make the child a contributing member of the society so that when tomorrow the child goes out to live on his own or her on her own, on her own is able to become a contributing member of the society. Uh, we have also extended for the last many years, we are also going out as uh, Dr. Bordova just now mentioned, we are running community programs and the same experience, expertise which we have created because essentially we see as far as uh, if we were to put it in a business way, we are in the business of parenting. We parent child who are children who are with us. But since we have learned this uh, skill, we try and help it, uh, work with communities and try to improve, improve their parenting skills. Both to taking care of children, but also making them strong to, in terms of livelihood, in terms of their income, so that child abandonment is prevented and they are able to take care of their children. 
And in this process, as Dr. Vardhava just said, uh, though that is not the straight intention, but we see and we recognize that there is an intrinsic value in the program is when we engage with the families, when we improve their uh, situations, uh, we silently bring about uh, societal changes, whether it's related to girl uh, or gender uh, uh, discrimination, whether it is to girl-child education, whether it is to early marriage, whether it is to uh, population control, birth control. So we have found that these are very, uh, these are things which are happening very silently. And this is something which we intend to build on. Uh, currently, we look after almost 30, 35,000 children. And we are now hoping that in the next couple of years, we will double these number of children from 30, 35 to close to 70,000. And hence, we also seek the support of the media to create this awareness amongst uh, people that they should support organizations like SOS so that we are able to do our work in a more uh, efficient uh, manner and we are able to reach out to more and more children. Thank you very much. Very true, very true. So, uh, soon after this pandemic, uh, we offered our services to the government, government department and authority that ASO Children's Village is ready to take many more children and within our existing uh, system. And we also realized that uh, many children also need short-term care because uh, the, ch the parents got affected and they do not have anyone, the children do not where the children can stay. So we have 32 children's villages in India and we offered the short stay home immediately in all 32 children's villages and 700, more than 700 children, they were brought to our short stay programs. And in addition to that, we immediately started a quarantine center. So any child who comes, they, they were quarantined and once they fulfill those mandatory period of self-isolation and then they move to the short stay homes. So that facility also we created at all the locations. In the community, we realized that many families, they lost their livelihood. And their livelihood become defunct. Or they, so we try to rebuild their livelihood by restarting the livelihood programs, rebuilding their life by the various livelihood programs. We also opened up community kitchen, ambulance services, and also supporting the children, more importantly, on their mental health. So these are the programs we uh, run, and also we created a child care space in a COVID center. So the children who got affected with COVID, they got a, a child-friendly space so that they mingle among themselves and do a lot of creative activity. Engaging the children in various creative activities was one of the key focus area, both our program in our family life care and in family strengthening program. How many children are admitted? Yeah. So as I said, in our children's village, 700 odd children, they were there in our programs. In our family life care. Yeah. New admissions. New admissions. New admissions. New, new admissions. I'm talking about 700 new. Currently, like across India, right? Across India. India. And currently, we have 7,000 children in SOS family who needs long-term care. The 32 children's village. And 25,000 children uh, they are supported under our family strengthening program. And 5,000 children we have added since January 21, and now currently we have 25,000 children. And we have 400 children, those who are under our kinship care. So in the, under the kinship care program, the children, they have lost both the parents, and the kin is not in a position to take care because of financial and other reasons. So through a formal method of government mechanism, we reached we reach out to the king and enabled the child to be grown up by the king and we extended all financial and non-financial support to the child. And this program helped the child to be not uprooted from the community and continue to stay with their own king and uh, the support is active. So 400 children supported under that program. There are 1300 children whom we enrolled under a skilling program. They are the youth where the parents either lost the job from the below poverty line 
they have either lost the incomes or they have lost the parents and there the children either do not have any skills or they are in the middle of a some program where they do not have the financial means to continue. So more than 1300 children, you, we supported under these programs. Sir, how many children got admitted during the COVID time? Seven hundred. Seven hundred. That is stay, start stay. No, no, that's they enter through short stay, yeah, yeah. and then they have moved on to the. How long many are you? Uh, you mentioned about uh, so mentioned about thirty-five thousand, right? So thirty-five thousands are indirect beneficiaries. Uh, direct. Indirect beneficiaries. Direct. Okay, direct beneficiaries are seven thousand. No, no. Direct are thirty-five thousand. Seven thousand are in our village. Okay. Twenty-five or thousand are in the. Community program who are also direct beneficiaries. Okay. If we are to uh, if you talk about indirect, then they will be more. Then it will be fifty six thousand because then they are for the community program. We have fifty six thousand. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, since you have produced and helped several children across country, is there any uh, case studies or testimonies uh, where these children come back to you uh, doing something? Uh, does uh, have you produced any of the IAS, IPS, or any of such? Uh, uh, you know, uh, people uh, SOS produce and they, do they come back and uh, SOS and, and come back to you? National or international? Nationally, I'm talking about. Yeah. Is National there any case studies? Uh, your <coughs> of course, case? we have children who uh, we have a wide. Uh, we enable child to uh, utilize or uh, open up the potential with the child has. Money never comes in the way of enabling the child to. Fulfill one's own potential. So, with the result, we have children who have become engineers, doctors, scientists, they have joined armed forces, but we also have uh, children who have become normal office people, uh, mechanics, technicians. So, it is all dependent upon the capacity of the child because it's like, uh, like in the normal community, not everybody will become a doctor or not everybody will. Become. So, the distribution amongst our children is also normal. However, we have exceptional people who have done extremely well in life. In fact, from this village only, we have Dr. Surekha. Dr. Morgan is there, Dr. Surekha is there. Uh, Dr. Surekha, she's won a national award for uh, research in microbiology. Uh, we have Dr. Morgan, who is a pediatrician and he's doing extremely well. So we have a wide range of tremendous success stories across the country. However, I think caution has to be exercised that Success is not unidimensional. It doesn't mean that the person or the child has done well academically. Only then the child is successful. We have children who are doing extremely good work. May not be as uh, successful in the traditional way. But I think we can be proud of uh, producing many good human beings who are doing very well in society. We have our own share. There are people who may not be all that good. But I think we have reasons to be very proud. From the CSR friend and from the government friend. Let me, uh, before I go to front, let me uh, you know, add uh, to what Mr. Black is saying. Uh, since I came in, uh, one of um, my curiosity was how these children ended up uh, in our uh, you know, temporary care or family friendly program or uh, family life care. And, um, just to give you three stories I have heard They're very briefly and we'll talk about them for long hours. One is a child who, uh, whose father died during COVID uh, and the mother went on the street uh, begging and looking for food with her child and she got sick and she also died. So this child left on the street. So she ended up under our care through the government in a process was the other story um, I was um, really hurt was uh, a child who was traveling with his father. Uh, the father left him on the train. And this child was found uh, in the police and the government custody. And he doesn't speak. Uh, mental, he has mental impairment. And he cannot tell what happened to him, he can't tell what his age, he can't tell his story. That's another kid which is now with that uh, special need being taken care of. It's a while since he's, he's incredibly handsome and active.
boy, still he is living with that uh, impairment. And um, our programs uh, in one of the Punjabi uh, the community work, where the community doesn't send girls to school. Women are not allowed to actually leave home to, to public places to do, generate income. And um, there are so many um, uh, restrictions on women's movement and girls' ability to be who they are. By the time we are visiting, actually girls are speaking out, talking about gender equality and um, about ending child marriage, that more children need to go to school, that, that they need more, that the current school to be expanding, and women talking about how they generated income, and uh, they were hiding from their husbands when they go to some uh, uh, group meetings. Uh, but now, because they generated income, husbands are encouraging them even to go. So it has changed the power relationship. It has changed the power relationship at public places. Now, that is where you need to start uh, desperate situations for the kids. They are extremely vulnerable at, the, at that point in time. It's not about being a doctor or being uh, you know, somebody. It's primarily it's about you know, basic need of shelter, somebody loving that child, looking after the, the health, and then it goes to education. But yesterday, I was um, I had an opportunity to have a video conference of young people. I mean, I couldn't believe. I mean, most of them on, uh, on the online were accomplished, extremely accomplished uh, former SOS children who didn't spend time. You know, how they did start in the first place. I think it must be a lot of you know serious stories out there. But they were talking, you know, what they are doing currently, teaching in universities, working in. Parasitical in, in private uh, sectors, in, in water, in health, in education. And uh, what they were discussing is how they could come together and give back. How they could help these children who are in the current care. What you know, uh, big issues they need to pick up in the world, from you know, climate you know, issues to uh, education and other uh, important matters. So I think this is, this is uh, uh, you know, heartwarming, it, it makes us proud. But at the same time, as I said earlier, the gap is huge. These are the few privileged, um, lucky, and because they are lucky, they, they, were, they were people who are committed to support them to reach that stage. But as of now, there are more coming in. Uh, COVID has killed 1.5 million caregivers, either father or mother or both, or <coughs> even grandmother if it's cost of This figure is as of April 2021. So it's a high. This is by a very prominent institution called the Lancet uh, Institute that produced after doing uh, uh, you know, research worldwide. It is estimated. But the number in my, in my view has increased because uh, the pandemic is still raging, you know, uh, killing more, more parents. And uh, that's just one factor. There are other factors. Floods, famine, uh, caused by uh, climate crisis. War is happening uh, in different parts of the world. Disaster like in the 80s. It kills families. And who is most affected by this? often children are most hit, the hardest hit. So um, I think that the struggle continue how to ensure that uh, with the you know, resources available, you could reach out and show to governments and other stakeholders. I say government because government is a duty bearer. It is, it is establishment that need to be taking care of all citizens. Our role is to really work with government and other actors to ensure that all are taken care of as best as possible. But without, um, without ignoring the fact that the, the, the um, root cause of the problem also need to be tackled. In that we work with other you know, actors, including the United Nations and global networks and platforms um, to address you know, the fundamental cause of poverty and inequality and injustice. 
Women World program body in 1949, uh, when he witnessed and uh, came across directly the impact of the Second World War that left you know, millions of children um, left without parental care, and, and some of them also at risk of it. He started in Austria, uh, in a place called Amis, and uh, but he didn't stop there. He continued to expand that program throughout Austria. Then the war affected Europe, the likes of France and Germany. And then he didn't stop there. He continued to reach out to other uh, nations in Asia, Africa, Latin America, and further Europe. And now there are 175 uh, members who are part of this program. So it's her mind. So yes, yes, Well, I think this acronym that that's being used, uh, and it's a brand as it is, without actually giving a specific, a trans, trans you know, uh, meaning to it. Um, at the moment, we don't use that. Um, that um, if, if you if we Google you know uh, dictionary, it might give you any name, but the true is. SOS is to, to say uh, uh, our soul meaning is inherent, but we don't use that. Uh, SOS is the, the brand. For example, I, other agencies use the same thing. You know, you know Oxfam, it is Oxfam for me. You don't use it. Uh, Oxfam is just a brand to uh, unite those people who are standing behind the mission and vision, which is you know, uh, giving loving care for every child. And donors who are visiting visitors yes. also. Yes. And in, in, during the pandemic, uh, we have uh, received support from the people. And uh, we, but at the same time, uh, the intent uh, we have, like in, uh, if you purely look at Bangalore, uh, currently uh, we are reaching out to more than 2,000 children under our family strengthening programs. And there are 35 children. 35 children. So 35 children, those who have lost both the parents or single parents, and we are supporting through a kinship care program. And it's a long, uh, it's a long term program for the holistic development of the child. So the need, 35 children. 35 children. And in addition to that, uh, how many more than that now? In the FSB? 1,200. Right? 12? 1,200. 1,200. So 1,200 children we have now added in our country's children program. And they are all one way or other they got affected by the COVID. Uh, so uh, the need is more. And our intent is to reach out to more number of children. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, in 21 itself, we have reached out to 5,000, and by year end, our intent is to reach out to minimum 8,000 children. And 2022, we have kept a, a target of reaching out to more than 10,000 children under our community program. And as Mr. Jensi said, we have a vision that we want to reach out to 70,000 children uh, in the next three to four years' time. So obviously, when there is a need, uh, and we need more and more people to come forward and support for the cause. The moment, because you see the children, those who come to us, they come to us for the CWC Child Welfare Committee. So government, um, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, they supported us, and many of our short stay programs, homes got recognized by the government, and they sent the children. Even in the community, the children, those with the, in partnership with the government, we respond to the kind of nutrition programs uh, to the affected families. We distributed grocery items, food items, and these were with the local level district administration support and collaboration. So government also supported us in this program and doing this uh, uh, response program post COVID. These 32 villages you said, and these are all rented premises or the own premises? How, how like the one we are sitting here. Yeah. So it is 32 villages in 22 states. And uh, mm -hmm. and these community programs are within wherever we work, within 25 to 30 kilometer radius, we work in the community. And the most vulnerable families 
and they are identified and we will work with them for minimum five years. But the properties, yeah. they are mostly yeah. owned. owned. Yeah. And <coughs> there again, government has helped uh, quite a few places. The government has given us land on long-term lease, which has, and we have done the construction. And the village is more as a civic community uh, Sorry? site. Civic community sites uh, you are built. Oh, well, civic community because, well, not civic community because whenever the land has been given, the land has been given outside the city. Right, right. Okay. It's over a period right, of time. It was earlier the city outskirts. This was, yeah, <coughs> the 20 city years grows. ago, this was. <coughs> <coughs> but uh, not taking away, yeah. I think we are grateful to the government that they have helped us because if they would not have given us the land, we would not have been able to exactly. construct the village. So while government has given us land, we have made our own contribution by constructing the property and people benefit. The minimum is that is a recognized program and then in addition to that we do a lot of soft skill program and then we facilitate them for a placement and a job. So 95 such youth from the community got uh, they are supported under this program. And our higher education in Kandila community 15 youths this year, we are going to do a financial And all together, how many years in higher education? Currently, no, currently, huh? currently 49 girls uh, in the village and 22 boys uh, in the village. So 70 youth, they are now pursuing the higher education in vocational and professional courses. And we have more than 200, how many children here? 266. Uh, two, two, total, we have 266 children under our program in SO Children's Village. Thank you. So, as I said, we have this kinship program. I explained to you that uh, uh, we have started 400 children, and many of them actually fall under the category which right now you explained. And we did a kind of partnership with the state government, we did a partnership with the district administration, and with the, our co workers and the government authorities together we identified the children, and through the team we supported them. And this is a long term program. It is not for a one year, two year. The child will be supported till the child completes the schooling with one employment skills, good English communication, and minimum IT skills. So, those five parameters will also ensure for the every youth or child supported under the PC program. If the elderly person passes away, will we take the child here or out of the also, yes. No, the orphans' kids, they have one address, person taking care of them. Yes. They have not been leaving it. Yes. So, you need so much support. Yes. But after a few years, the elderly person passes away, this kids will be again no. So, then we have our children's village. As I said, we have our children's village. Okay. So, child is no one who come to our children's village. So, one thing I just like to add here is that uh, we do not leave any child in the middle. So, we do not have the concept of uh, uh, terminating a child, keeping a child, like any other family, once the child is born, it's the responsibility of the parents. So we are into the role of parenting. Once the child comes to us, it is our, we make all effort to make sure that the child becomes a self-reliant. Do, do you get any exemptions uh, when you go for an admission in some of the international colleges and schools for uh, being an NGO? Is there an ex exemption for you, there apart from some, your government uh, schools? Yeah. There are some institutions, they offer some kind of... But there is some percentage, uh, I think it's dedicated for it NGOs, is, is not there is some quota, I think. Yeah, it, it depends where, you know, where the kind of partnership is established. In some places, uh, say Tunisia, the government puts a substantial amount of money into SOS. So uh, SOS is not because there are some bright students. We have, because I, since I also had worked associated with the SOS children, they are very bright children. So they uh, they are actually more deserving to study in uh, reputed uh, international Partly standards. they are naturally talented, and, uh, but um, uh, being talented unless you actually cultivate it. Uh, that will not come out. And the Hermann Minor Schools, worldwide, wherever they are, attracted um, um, teachers who are very uh, qualified, but also extremely passionate. They do their job uh, with commitment, and they drive innovation and, and uh, creativity in the schools. Uh, that is also true. Uh, when I came in here, I visited science uh, laboratories in three schools so far and the children were showing uh, their uh, experiments to us when we were visiting. And the level of um, their uh, 
experiment. It's really fun to say uh, 10th grade in my country, which means you know the, the teachers have done an incredible job of creating these kids uh, in living science. And they are creating new ways of instilling knowledge, uh, not only in the classroom and laboratory, but even outside, in the garden, you know, with, with agriculture and you know, with other um, uh, life cycles. So, uh, you know, in that we are successful. And uh, the, 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 you know, the organization actually you know, gives that support, not only those who are under care, but also in the community, but also they are part, part of the community, those who can afford, can pay and join. See, uh, in government level, we have had a uh, uh, lot of success with the uh, government. And these are at different levels. <coughs> Some are purely financial partnerships where they also support us and we, uh, they support uh, us in taking care of children. Uh, but there are many programs where we are done the programs together, where uh, SOS is chosen as a knowledge partner. And we run the programs together uh, in specific areas, kinship care. We have a new program which is foster care. So where uh, government identifies individuals who are willing to become foster parents. So we then put children under those parents' care who don't have parental care. And then that program is also run jointly by SOS and the government. We provide the knowledge of parenting. As we are saying that we, you know, that's an area where we have uh, some knowledge. So we provide the skills of parenting to those parents through our uh, uh, caregivers who keep visiting regularly. But then part, government also partners in ensuring the other allied, you know, protective paraphernalia. So we have financial partnerships, we have uh, running programs together, knowledge partnerships, so various means we are doing, but Karnataka specifically. Uh, it's the foundation that uh, I mean, the committee also, we are also part of that, the state committee. So we are getting very good support from the district administration. 